So what we have for you guys tonight is a bit different from the people we usually bring in the show. So what's up guys? Sneaker Roche here. Welcome to the Six Man Podcast. So for tonight, we have a current business student, a rising lifestyle influencer, and commercial actress. <laughs> and for me, arguably the best UAP courtside reporter for season 85. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Kyla Kingsu. What's up, Kai? Hi, Nico. Thanks for having me. What an intro naman. Nahiya ako. <laughs> Siyempre, kasi ano, alam ka naman. I just say like, oh guys, let's welcome Kyla Kingsu. It dapat ano, uh, dapat may counting research, something to know about. <laughs> Do you know uh, yung Hot Ones? Hot ones. Yung no. sa yung sa YouTube yung word the act the actor actress eat five wings yung super hot oh, wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so para idol ko dun yung nagi interview. So grabe siya mag research sa mga actors and actresses. So that when when he asks questions, sometimes they're like, "Wow, I didn't know you know that. Thank you." So <laughs> I want to reach that kind of level with you guys, especially here, na something different. So. For those wondering why we decided to take a left turn when it comes to who we usually have on the podcast, it's because we rarely get to see talented women like Kai in the field of sports since they're usually the ones interviewing the biggest and brightest stars. So in her end for the media, she's the one behind the camera. Oh, no, no. She's the one in front of the camera, but she's not the athlete. She's the one asking the people we usually bring to this podcast. So it's actually great to have someone like her here could give us a... Maybe mga tips then how to get into courts and reporting, especially for, for those uh 15% women who listen to the podcast. Could be, right? You guys could be the next ones here. So uh there are a lot of be there are a lot, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who would learn a lot from Kai. Especially there may mga guys pa rin naman, diba, na they could consider for courts and reporting. I think now lang is first time in a long while that they're all, it's all women. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, last thing here, I, we want to know how she juggles everything from being a student to being an influencer and a reporter for all televised UAP sports. And uh, first thing, Kai, before most people, such as myself, got to know you through reporting for La Salle, I know that you started off as a dancer back with Ika. And with that, I'm curious to know, what dance routines are your favorite? Just let's start off light here. Is it music where it's mostly comprised of hip-hop? Like a crump, kaba, do you like that? Or you like the, the graceful ones, the ballet part when it comes to dancing? Nico, it's been a while since someone asked me about dance, actually. I don't think a lot of people know na, na I used to be a dancer. But actually, I started dancing ballet when I was just three years old. So I stayed in ballet until I was 12. And then, um, so I was used to like going up in the studio, competing. And I switched to hip hop or street dance when I joined the Ika dance group in my high school in grade seven. So I stayed there all the way to grade 12. And during my time there, I also joined outside teams like Kid Lightning Crew and Legit Status. If legit you're Status. Yeah. 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 Um, so we were. Matagal na legit Status. Oh, matagal na. Yeah. So Are they we... under careless music? Parang they're under care. Oh, para... no. They're not. We're that's not them. Coach Vimy Rivera. Oh, okay. I mix yeah. it up. Okay, go ahead. You said legit status part of outside dance groups. Yeah. So for um, I was initially part of Kid Lightning Crew. So that was like Kid the Lightning. first junior dance crew that competed at Hip Hop International back in 2014. Pa. So I was just like 12, 13 years old. And then legit status, naman, I competed with them in 2017 in Arizona for Hip Hop. Yeah. So I guess in terms of styles, I enjoyed ballet when I was younger, but I enjoyed hip-hop, you know, street dance a lot more. And yeah, but as I entered college, I decided to put dance aside and pursue like my other dreams, my other goals. So ngayon, hanggang TikTok na lang yung mga dances ko. Nakita ko yung TikTok. Oh, sabi, ngayon, now that you said this, na-connect ko na. Like, so, parang ano ah. <laughs> I think like feel ko mabilis mo nakaka- na, nakakatch yung dances and everything there's a foundation pala yeah yeah my foundation naman just kind of rusty na <laughs> <laughs> did you copy the sketchers na abutan nyo ba yun not sure kasi kung na-defunct na yung sketchers eh kasi in my time well sorry I'm 28 years old by the way I'm not that old 28 <laughs> late naabutan ko pa yun there's sketchers street dance yeah, yeah. did you I used mm-hmm. to watch um sketches, yeah, but I was still younger that time, so di ko na naabot. But we competed in other competitions like World of Dance, the and World of yeah, Dance. school competitions. Yeah. 
how is that competing interna- internationally? Because I'm sure that's different age groups, right? Like iba, iba, or yeah. parang that's my specific age group lang that competed under, you said Kid Lightning and, uh, and Legit mm-hmm. Status. Meron ba yung age group or mix kayo? Um, for kid, ah uh, yeah, there's age group. So there's like the junior varsity, which is like until 18 years old, and mega yeah. crew that's like open for everyone. So I guess it's always like a different experience. It's fun also to get to know like people from all over the world who love dancing. You, you get to learn about their culture, spend some time with them, and you know just absorb everything and apply it into your craft. And guy, I is it like I'm try I'm gonna assume here right? the reason you you didn't pursue dancing is because practicing takes so much time. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. But the... I think for me, it was more of, I spent so many years already dancing. I really wanted to try something different in college, you know, like reinvent myself. <laughs> reinvent yourself. Grab. Yun yung ano yun, no? yung parang like high school uh, life crisis entering college. Like, should I change yeah. my nickname? Should I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my friends are yeah, gonna... <laughs> So, uh, now, now that we're talking about college, and when we were trying to schedule this interview, I said, like, do you use Google Calendar? I asked that every, to every guest and she was like, yes, here's my email and everything. She's the first person that said yes. Oh, so really? I think so, Yeah, so 16... And the first girl. <laughs> and the first girl. <laughs> but I can assume that maybe the next girls will invite here oh yeah, yeah just put it on my Google calendar as well I'm like not surprised <laughs> setting the standard right here so Kai with that one with everything going on do you have everything on like a notion do you have everything in a is your life on a calendar mapped out uh yeah, pretty much. I have to admit, like I'm not so much into like um astrology things, but I'm a Virgo <laughs> and Virgos are known to be very organized and everything. Yes. And I guess as I mentioned, like I grew up having a busy schedule with dance. So I'd be used I'm quite used to like balancing a lot on my plate. So yeah, I use GCAL a lot for school, meetings, work. But I also use Notion for like specific like academics. And then I also have my planner like the legit planner to really like plan my day in detail so yeah i'm quite um particular when it comes to like scheduling because i want to make sure that i'm able to attend to all my endeavors that's great and i uh, know at least you're not the type na, oh sorry i forgot because of course you you that's how you view yourself you want to be that person na, oh i forgot i forgot <laughs> kailangan professional <laughs> Yan, kailangan. wait anong year ka na ba? what year are you in college I'm fourth year. I'm I'm gonna finish this December. December. Oh shoot! Tapos you're gonna apply na for for work. Is are we still following the the, the traditional route, guy? When I mean traditional route, it's like you know corporate job, because er, there's a lot of things going on with with you right now. Like from yeah. being an influencer, you're you're in media, and it look and looking like you're a natural for it. So, are you? Is this still the path that you saw for yourself? at the start when you entered college like you really did you aim to become a like this is to to where you are right now well actually it's quite a funny story but um yeah so i pre my course right now is applied corporate management so ever since i was younger i was sure in a I was going to become a businesswoman i would take over my family's business because background lang i'm an only child and mm. a chinese family so yeah, it's expected that I'll take over for the business, right? So I, uh, I'm taking up corporate management. And in my course, I have three different internships or OJT. So I'm already done with two. And after those two internships plus like extra internships, I realized that the corporate life is not for me. And so, um, yeah, senior year, ko, so I was like, hmm. you know, I don't want to have any regrets. I don't want to have any. Yeah. So I decided to pursue, you know, courtside reporting. And actually, it's not so far. Like, I, I don't have much hosting experience. But my course in UP, if ever, was broadcast communication. So it was always, like, business, broadcom, like, if, entering Oh, wait. Content. You started in UP? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I just got accepted. Ah, okay. I thought parang... No, no, no. I was, <laughs> Did they like, miss something? <laughs> no, no. I was laying it out. Okay, and okay. I, I chose business first, but in my senior year, I was like, you know, I want to still try to pursue that what if that 
long lost goal. And so yeah, I found myself falling in love with this job and I feel like things just came full circle because before I felt like I just had to do one thing, I just had to choose one thing, but I realized na you know, if kaya naman i-balance both, why not, diba? And that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm not so sure yet, like I don't have a very specific path after this, but I'd love to stay in the field and you balance my family business with it, you know. Best of both worlds. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the be- and that's the benefit of having a family business. I mean, I wouldn't say that they're they're more lenient with you. It's more of just it's it's a good and like not a fallback, but it's a good like something that that can uh masasalo ka the family mm-hmm. business if ever like you can try for this career and then I mean knock on wood, right? I, of course you you want to make into this career, but <laughs> it's the family business there and uh that's your course. So ready ka at least like, okay. Mm-hmm. I have yeah, this for my foundation at least with my course. Mm-hmm. So sakto talaga. And uh in this four years it got four years in college, right? Like is, is this this isn't a five year course? Four years, right? Four years. <laughs> in this four in this in your four years with La Salle, I'm sure na with you have your Instagram feed showed na mar- there's been a few brands already that already partnered with you. So, do you have a favorite and what type of partnerships do you enjoy the most when it comes to brand partnerships? Because I'm sure may na-reject ka na kasi it doesn't fit who you are. You're yeah. at that point na hindi ka na lang tanggap ng tanggap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I guess I started kasi nung pandemic. Like, it actually mm-hmm. started when nag yung mga online businesses. And yeah. I just wanted to help out my friend like who needed like content. So, I took pictures with the clothes. And yeah, it started from there, like, tuloy-tuloy na lang some brands started reaching out. And yeah, at first I was, you know, like, accepting everything. That's how it starts naman, diba? But then I realized that, you know, I want to work on my personal branding and make sure that the products and the brands that I promote are aligned with me and my personality, diba? What I stand for. And so now, I guess I enjoy, like, fashion, beauty, lifestyle brands the most sometimes there are brands that reach out for like dances on tiktok which is like i find it funny and it's cute then i get to like you know use my experience for that but yeah i just basically like having the freedom to you know try out the products first before i promote them so that you know i'm not just you using it for you know cloud for cloud <laughs> yeah like i actually use the products and those are the products that i promote to the people who follow me you said about a brand that reached out to you to na, na magda dance ka on TikTok. But I don't re- I remember anything like that. Meron ba? Like may may tinuloy ka ba? Kasi I saw like there was a Cornetto, but you didn't dance there. It was just mm-hmm. a package, right? Or did you dance? Kasi nakita ko lang Cornetto. Eh. Doon ako naka-focus sa mga daming ano ah, ice cream. Ah. Kailan kaya ako mapapadala ng Cornetto? <laughs> Shout out to Cornetto. No, actually um I did dances for McDo. It's just McDo. And recently for Watson, there are other brands as well. But, you know, sometimes I'm here. I think it's because I just haven't danced in a long time. But, you know, it's fun parent to get to do what I love, you know, at the same time, make my content. <laughs> but you can mix everything. Considering that fourth year, she's really our thesis, right? Or did you take your thesis on the third year? I'm done with the first half of the thesis. And currently ongoing the second. So, yeah, it's hectic. <laughs> At least we mix lahat. And uh grab it. Grab that's a, that's a lot of that's a lot of uh calendars na na, ano, na, na time blocks. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw that you started your first ever TVC which is Mondenisen. Is that your first? I I'm assuming it's going to be it, it was your first. So yeah. can you take me back in that to that experience with them from the moment they reached out to you the shooting schedule? How 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 was it? Was it everything you expected it to be? Well, you know, I grew up watching mga teleseries on ABS. So, I've always, like, had this thing for, you know, acting. But just for fun. Like, it was never a dream na I really wanted to pursue. But it was always just at the back of my head na, oh, it must be fun, right? And so, nagkataon na someone forwarded an open casting call to me. That was last, early last year, if I'm not mistaken. And so I just decided to shoot my shot. I think it was the start of the year. So it was that time. Alam mo yung pang January pa, Feb. Like, you want to go for your goals and everything. So I, I just shot. Uh, I just tried. 
um, I sent over my materials through email and thankfully they reached back and yeah, I got accepted for a project with a brand that I actually love. Uh, backstory lang, that um, Nissan Butter Coconut, like that's my baon talaga in school. Like, oh, growing... wow. okay. Yeah, and when I like pursued the casting call, like syempre, I didn't know pa what brand or what specific product, but I was just super lucky. And so yeah, the experience was really fun, like being a newcomer. Of course, I was scared, nervous, but I was just really excited. I got to meet like co-talents and people from the production team who were really, really welcoming toward me. And um, buti na lang. So I got to like ask them all questions and like they guided me throughout my first day on the job. So right now, um, yeah, I'm really busy with school and UAAP. So I wasn't able to really prioritize those TBCs and everything. But thankfully, I still get, you know, casting calls. And there's actually a TVC that I shot just last week. Oy, up. Na ba i-share yan? Or bawal pa? Hindi, hindi ba? Wala pa, wala pa. But it's coming out probably for the summer. So yeah, exciting. <laughs> Galing talaga. And uh, did you have to, like, reject a TVC? Like, something na during the during the past year? Or no naman, more of pag TVC, you're usually, oh, game, whatever it is. Basta, like, it's, it's, it's considered a big project. It's not just like a post, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there are opportunities that are usually sent to me um, by my agent with, you know, mm-hmm. descriptions that fit my, like, how I look and everything. But I guess I just told them that it's not really my priority for now. But when this specific opportunity came up recently, I, I wanted to really go for it because it was just perfect. <laughs> and uh, next month, no? Abangan natin yan kasi ano eh, kahit... <laughs> Baka off the record, I'll try asking. <laughs> <laughs> mamaya na lang. <laughs> mamaya, mamaya na lang. So, you meant the, the thing, the, the reason I I was able to connect with you was because you were the cor- courtside reporter for La Salle. So, where did that interest come from? Or is it because your friends told you like, come on, let's try. Or is it something personal, your friends? And uh, and I'm sure your parents are so supportive already. I, I'm not... That's a given. <laughs> well, actually, you know, I was never an athlete. And I never really watched any sports growing up because, you know, I was busy dancing my whole life. But um, in legit status, I saw some of my atas in the team, like Ate Kareem Katabayan, who became a courtside reporter. And, you know, I was still young back then when she was in college. But watching her, like seeing how hard she worked and how she really just pushed for that dream, even if she was a dancer, you know. I just felt like, you know, anything is possible. And yeah, as I entered college, I had that UAAP courtside reporter dream at the back of my head. So I joined the DLSU Green Media Group. It was like, they have like a hosting pool. Eh, kaso, nags, um, biglang nag-pandemic. So everything <laughs> went online. Yeah, so the org kind of um dissolved, sadly, during that time. So I... Um, just decided to wait. Go... Dissolved? It, it, yeah. it, like dissolve? Yeah, Is it a new org? That... No, it's an old org in school. Oh. Like, they do productions, but since everything went online, they weren't able to continue. And until now, I think wala pa rin. Like nothing's happening, sadly. But yeah, so I decided to go for online hosting opportunities. Na lang. like within my orgs, like my home orgs, my business management orgs. Uh, para lang, you know, I get to have some experience and build upon it. And then as things started going back to normal, ayun, this opportunity to be a courtside reporter for season 85 came up and I decided like, this is it. Like, I'm gonna go for it. And there's lots of pressure, of course, being yeah. somewhat not familiar with the sport. Siyempre, there are lots of people who grew up like watching the UAAP who are big fans of all these players. So, of course, there's that... um what do you call that, imposter syndrome that kicks in every now and then. But, you know, I just um really committed myself into the work. I did my homework, like, oh my gosh, God knows how much research I've put into The sports. This. Yeah, learning the sport from scratch and learning about these players, getting to know them. I don't want to be reporting, like, not actually knowing what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, and thankfully, like, my hard work paid off naman. <laughs> Yung research na yan, Kai, was it before the interviews? Like, before the, the casting? Like, yung, yung the v, is it VTR? It's VTR, right? Like applications, yeah. Yung applications. Um, 
Yeah, of course, before applying, I did my homework already. Like, I already started with, you know, the sports, what happened last season and everything. But when it came to, like, the players, uh, like, one-on-one, that started when I already got the job. Yeah. Which sport gave you the hardest time? <laughs> when, when, you were start, when you were studying, it's huh? complicated. Well, actually, <laughs> basketball kasi was the first, right, last year. And yeah. we were sure pa kasi if we were going to do volleyball. So I just okay. focused on basketball first. So at least I had time to like take it one sport at a time. But now we're doing women's and men's volleyball. So double challenge. <laughs> and buti na focus ka on one sport, right? Kasi it, I think it's only volleyball na, pin, na tinatelevise ng UAP right now. Wala siyang kasabay na, na sport mm-hmm. that, you, that you call, right? Oh yeah, just volleyball for us correspondents, yes. Great. So you have actually you have ano, you have time. Imagine if tatlo tatlo ng sabayan like baseball, <laughs> volleyball and para hindi ko na kaya. <laughs> Pasab na. Oh. May meron ba tayong backup? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so, take me through your first day on the job. I said first day basketball game for La Salle. Did you feel nervous at all when you first started approaching the players in practices or games? Or you were just so in the moment on that game day, op- o- UAP opening day, and you didn't just, you didn't realize anymore na ka, everything just clicked? On my first day on the job, I think I'd have to tell you about my first day meeting the team. So I met the yeah. team during like the UAAP media day where they take like all these materials, pictures for them. And that was the first time that I met all these players. I was introduced to the coaches, the players. And oh my gosh, that was so overwhelming. Because of course, I'm like the only girl. There's like this tiny girl there going up to their um, to their training area. And yeah, but they were all like the DLSU Green Archers. They were all really, really nice to me, thankfully. <laughs> um, Really friendly. So it wasn't hard to interview them, get to know them. But okay, my first day on the job, my first game was against UP. So that was a big oh, game. It's a big game. Agad, agad. Yeah, oh, it's like the rematch UP. from the season 84 where Lasal yeah. was UP. So there were lots of people. So um, <laughs> I wasn't ready at all. Well, I had my pre-game report, my first, um, first quarter report. But at that time, I kept looking down at my reports. Like I remember they'd always tell us, you know, when the camera is on you, make sure you're just looking at the camera because okay. that's your time to shine, right? But at that day, I really couldn't. Like, I didn't want to make a mistake with my script. So I mm-hmm. kept looking down, you know. I wasn't going to risk it. This is my first time live. But after that, I really saw, like, my perf- I rewatched the videos even though it was, you know, cringe. cringe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very cringy. I had to watch it so I knew what to work on. And thankfully, my mentors, they were really helpful. They gave a lot of comments for me to work on on my first day. So, um, yeah, it was just a really good learning experience. It was, I think it's also good looking back, um, that it was a big game right away. So I had to be used to, like, the loud noises. You know, so many things are happening from the panel talking to, like, the drums, the players. Like, um, you have to be able to focus on everything that's happening in the moment. So yeah, um, my first day was, it was fun, overwhelming at the same time. Mentors, is it like Sinamiko Halili? Are they the same people who mentor you guys? Or it's different for when it comes to courtside reporting? We have a lot of mentors. The one directly um, helping us is Sam Corrales. She's like the training lead for yeah, the correspondence. But of course, Sir Miko, Sir Boom, um, Miss Malu, there are lots of people um behind the scenes who really guide us on um, do like give us comments like one on one and they're thankfully all very approachable so yeah what well, do you remember the game back uh in the UAP it's a UAP basketball when when you realized that oh wow I'm I'm very comfortable now I'm not looking down anymore I just need to take one look <laughs> I got this do you remember oh, when oh no I would never say that I am oh like, you never confident like of course i have better game days where you know i'm not yeah. looking down now when there's the camera and that's what i'm really trying to do now but i wouldn't say that i'm super confident i feel like i'm just good at um ano ba? <laughs> like i i really prepare like i don't go to work unprepared so that i'm able to you know give my best but you know it's still a learning process like i'm learning more things every day 
um with the many games that I'm covering now, like men's and women's, I have to be able to create like you know creative reports. Like I can't just be doing the same level of things. And I think that's uh the the number one thing that people get. Uh, because mga tao, it's more of madali lang maging court report. I'm just gonna ask one two questions, right? But what is the level of preparation do you do, Kai, when it comes to to your report? Is it something you do the night before? You think of like, do you do research like, oh, I can ask him this, or it's more about like uh more on the in game situation? You assess what happened in the game, and only then you're gonna ask questions, or is it like you have ba on entering the games? Well, before um we got our jobs, or actually before we started like reporting, of course we had like workshops where different yeah. um mentors and past court side reporters taught us like what to do, how to prepare, and oh, what I do usually like for basketball, um I'd make sure to attend their trainings at least one training before a game so that I'm able to speak with them one on one, um. So usually I have my pre-game report already prepared and my first quarter report. So those are the baons, like the baons. Yeah, those are um about what they did that past week or what they've learned from the previous game, how they're gonna bounce back or you know keep their momentum. Um, but then the rest of it, it's just what happens in the moment. So usually yung mga huddle reports yan. For example, there is a player doing really well so that's the player i'm going to talk about uh based on like my previous conversations with the guy or you know what i remember lang it's all about like you know um having all these balance but in the moment you have to know how to integrate it in the conversation because it can't be random lang like you have to be able to create um a cohesive broadcast with the panel and what they're talking about to make sure that everything goes goes along well That's great, because like when you ask questions to the players, to the players or the coaches, there's a short amount of time lang eh. Because diba pag timeout, especially if they're down, they're more difficult mga yan eh. So yeah. you don't want to waste their time if you ask a question like, "So how much to po?" <laughs> no way, no way. Actually, we don't ask questions like during the game. Like when mm-hmm. it's game time, I let them do their job. Like it's pretty intense. I just like talk about what I observe. Sometimes you know there are huddles where. You can't really get much from what the coach is saying. Maybe it's, it's technical. About it's yeah, technical, it's very right? technical. Yeah. So you just have to observe, like, what's the vibe? Um, how are the players looking? Like, are they tense? Like, are they confident? So yeah, stuff like that. For this, this question applies to both basketball and volleyball. Is there time uh, moments in your reporting that you ask a player like? Hey, or you don't, you never ask the players directly during a game, or sometimes kap pwede naman, like you ask them something very quick. Uh, sometimes yeah, pwede naman, especially pwede like naman. bench players. And some uh for basketball, I used to ask the assistant coaches men sand half time, um for like you know what what I can say, what I can report. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> biglang ba- off the record pala. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always have to make sure that, you know, everything's approved. I don't want to report anything that's about their game plan, anything that's private to the team. So you have to respect them as well. So, wala ka naman slip up this season, right? Na, oh, I'm not, I was not supposed to report that. Wala kang ganong na moment. You're, wala yeah, everything's naman clean. clean. <laughs> wala naman. <laughs> Buti naman, right? Kasi biglang, oh, <laughs> Pat- Pat- that, no wonder I got that memo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't claim that energy. <laughs> And uh, I think the perks of this job get uh, of being a courtside reporter is that you get to meet incredible people. So for Kai, just this not the, not this past week, I think the last two weeks, uh, the, two weeks ago, uh, you and a few lucky women were able to meet Cassidy Hubbard. One of the most notable women in broadcasting, particularly in the NBA. The reason why I know about Cassidy Hubbard is because of the NBA. I'm a big NBA fan. So, in your short time and in interaction with her, what's the most important lesson or advice you got from her during? Is it in the Slam Office when you guys met her? At the Titan HQ. Titan, Titan HQ. Um. Yeah, it was really inspiring. Um. Short question and answer portion meeting um i was so so surprised actually when they reached out and i was thankful for the opportunity because not everyone like you said not everyone gets to meet someone um with that career you know the, someone doing so great in the nba and um i was actually able to ask her 
um about how she continues to level up her reports like with this many games and the many sports that she has already covered how does she continue to create you know reports and not run out of things to say and she told me that um it's just important to keep showing up and do the work um like she talked about attending practices attending trainings even though uh, she knows naman na minsan not much is really going to happen maybe she won't even get to interview but just being there being present um you get to form this trust and build that trust with those players na oh you're really committed to your work and this girl is really like you know she's not doing it just for her job she actually cares about the sport uh, she actually cares about the people and so yeah i was just really inspired by her answer i i always try to um go to their trainings as well for both men's and women's volleyball right now even if like you know super hectic schedule and super aga minsan their trainings right yeah they do like twice a day right in the morning and, and i have classes too but you know every time i'm there there's always something new that i learn about a player about the team and i don't get to interview all the time like i don't want to go there just to interview all the time but you know just getting to know them it's really fulfilling and it helps me in my job as well and uh and of course iba yung dedication to in in especially being a good courtside reporter and that that is definitely seen naman with the way you report the stuff that you say and whenever you report it's all it it seems uh, it's not it seems it is very natural when you when the words flow out when you talk about a specific topic and it, that's something that you reported in the bench and that's the reason why uh for me why she became one of my court, favorite courtside reporters it's very clear very eloquent with her words when it comes to reporting so with that guy is is that something that always cuz you said that you've been a dancer right not 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 public speaking but has this always has this been like a hidden talent before hindi mo lang masyado ginagawa like how you used to now or it's something that you learned during the job you practice you practice every night is it something that you always try to hone every day well first of all thank you so much it means a lot to me <laughs> it's a lot of hard work but to answer your question I don't think it's something on um, like very natural to me. Like as you mentioned, I grew up as a dancer mm-hmm. that's performing. Like I don't really get to speak a lot <laughs> with my Yeah, friends. well. Yeah. But I guess like um looking back, like my best subjects would always be like English, writing. I'd always had like a love for like storytelling. Like I like journaling, like you know, I like writing. It's all in my personal time lang. I guess I never just had the opportunity to like hone that skill of mine. But thankfully now, like when I put dance aside, I guess I had more time to really pursue it. And it took a lot of, you know, I had to get over the fear of not being good enough, the fear na I don't belong, like I said, the imposter syndrome. And just, you know, I really love what I'm doing right now. So I keep on trying to improve on it. Like I don't practice like every night, like you said. But what <laughs> I go do practice is, in I... front of a game, no? Like okay, I'll try <laughs> no, it. <laughs> but what I do is I really watch my previous games to review like how I did, how I spoke, the pace, the tone. Um, yeah, I think it's just the things that you do behind the scenes that matter, and it's gonna show na man in your work and in your performance. With all of that, is there has there been like a uh, have you made up mga neg- have you has there ever been like, any negative experience from being a CSR? Like, uh, did you receive any bad comments like on on posts or anything? Or you don't read the comments as much? You try to avoid that part. <laughs> or may some did you come across something? Well, you know what? Before the season, like the basketball season even started, they already Before. warned us that um you know the fans are intense and especially on twitter and so well i'm not really i'm really not active on twitter, not on twitter yeah so i don't really check like i do my best i don't want to see it um what i value is the comments of my mentors those people in the field because i feel like they give you constructive criticism and they'll really be honest with you on what you need to improve on there's a lot of hate online and you know as a content creator as well it's yeah expect- oh. something it's something i am aware of like it's something i knew since um i was younger so i know how to shut off that external noise and just focus on you know the comments the people who matter uh, of course it will affect me like 
if I read something bad about me, I'm not lying. It's gonna affect me. So I'd rather just not. <laughs> I love yeah. I love how you're real about it. Some people are like, oh, it doesn't bother me actually. Oh, I know. It doesn't bother. <laughs> <laughs> and is that like pag na bother? It's like a day. Pero just like mga one hour la, one two hours. And like, oh yeah, I forgot about it already. Yeah, you have to get over it. I guess it's about proving yourself. Like, mm-hmm. um, siguro, uh, example, I acci- accidentally read like a bad comment or Hindi something. Hindi maiwasan eh. Di ba? Sometimes yeah, you're reading yeah, comments from your friends. May it. sisingit na isa eh. Yeah, yeah. So, I think what you can just do is focus on like you, how to improve and prove them wrong. Like, do so well that they won't have anything bad to say anymore. <laughs> perfect. It's perfect advice. So, <laughs> After the UAP courtside reporting is over, you're a senior already. So are, what are your next goals that you have set for yourself? And if you can, projects that you can cur- that you're currently work on or preparing for. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm like really busy with what's happening right now, like thesis, like mm-hmm. my final majors and the UAAP um last stretch. We're on the second round already for men's and women's volleyball. So that's and pretty soon, like it'll end around May, early June. So I think what I'm focusing on, um, I just wanna get my degree. <laughs> 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 but after that, um, I really wanna stay in the field. I'm not um really particular, like you know, sports talaga, but I really wanna stay in the media field. I I think I've fallen in love with it. Nga. Like I really wanna hone that craft. I'm still beginning, like there's still so much to learn. I don't have much experience. But I really want to grow there. But at the same time, there is my family business, which I'll also get into. So I just want to have the best of both worlds, as I mentioned, mm. and you know, get to balance both. Um, and other projects. Well, there is also the content creation thing. It's not like mm. my main priority, but you know, it helps. It's also there, and there's also the TVCs, which hopefully I'll have more time for in the future. <laughs> How about Teleseria? Is the, when's the Star of Magic cast? <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, that was when I was younger. But I don't think I'll get into talagang te- like you know, acting. Just, just commercial. Pakit lang with ano. <laughs> for now, commercial. Uh, commercial for now. Nandun tayo sa trajectory niya na ano? Eh, TVC muna. Wala pa yung Star of Magic na casting. Ah, wala pa yung audition for. Extra, well, extra but, muna. TVCs first. TVCs <laughs> first. But kung showbiz, like, for example, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility sabihin nila you become an extra for like a scene with, with Katniel. <laughs> Game ka, I'm assuming. Like, sige, let's try. Like, any, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know what to say yet. Like, anything is possible. I'm open to everything. I'm still like, you know, finding my way. <laughs> So I'm a believer of manifesting your dreams into reality. So to end this episode, what could you tell what could you tell yourself that you actually made it? What's what are you looking at? What's the key uh moments? Now, oh okay, yeah, I made it. Mm, well see, I'm quite far from that still. I'm still young. But um I always tell people that my biggest idol or my like inspiration yeah. has always been part evangelista. Like that's my life peg. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, she may you may see like um she has this luxurious life, like all these big things, traveling everywhere. But what I love about her is that is her heart and mm-hmm. you know how she uses her platform to inspire um women, inspire younger people. And you know, she uses it for the good. I've always always had a passion for, you know charity work, community building. And I, I just want to use my platform for the good to help people. And I don't really know when I'm going to tell myself that I've made it, but I'd be quite proud of myself if I was able to use the platform that I gain or the work that I have to contribute to something much bigger than myself. And it, and, and that's a great role model. <laughs> and it's a great role model. And uh, and I saw actually, na, <laughs> and, and yung, like, See heart like we like we most guys know heart. That's the, the way when she just posts photos on IG being in Paris. But if you look through her feed, she really does help in other in other aspects. She's present in a lot of fields, and uh, she's really an incredible uh role model for women. So when you met her, Kai, did you 
Did did you were you speechless for like five to ten seconds? You you already know what to say when you met her during one of the brand events. What's the name of the branding? I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to edit this anymore. So what was the name of the brand? Is it is it Nivea? Is it, it is it is for Avon? It is for Avon. Avon. I'm yes. gonna edit that part out. <laughs> so yeah, I met her like last month, mm. and oh my gosh, it was a dream come true. Like I couldn't um I couldn't believe it that she was like right in front of me. So. Actually, quick story lang. I was like in the front row. So I was literally like right in front of her the whole event. But I couldn't come up close for a picture because she had, you know, all these media, all these bodyguards and everything. Yeah. As soon as she was about to leave, I still didn't get a picture with her. Like, and some girls did. And I was like, oh my gosh, she cannot leave without, you know, me getting a picture with her. And my friend, she literally like screamed like, heart, she doesn't have a picture with you yet. And Oh my gosh! So all the girls were like looking at me, all the guards and everyone. They're like, "Who is who's this?" <laughs> but oh, you I don't was, know the others. You don't know the rest, the other people that you were with, like you other was, influencers. Um, there were a lot of influencers. Like yeah. I had some, but there were a lot of others that I didn't know who ah, okay, also so got the picture with Heart. But Heart was about to leave, and I was the last girl who got a picture with her. I didn't really get to say much anymore. But after the picture, I was just like, "Thank you so much," and then she's like. You're welcome. <laughs> Fine, girl. <laughs> yeah. What I said, but okay, na yun, my picture na. <laughs> That's great. And uh, did you know about the, the day prior that she was gonna be there? Or surprised you were like, your heart is here. Oh, yeah. I, I knew she was gonna be there. So I was like looking forward to it the moment I got the invite. <laughs> but you to look at the night before because you're gonna meet one of your idols. <laughs> Yeah, I just took like one hour to get ready. <laughs> Bilisan, no? Like, where, where, where is she? <laughs> and everybody, that's Kyla King Su. Uh, sh- incredible stories. And I'm sure you guys picked up a lot from like from her journey through uh, from being an influencer, from being a student, uh, a courtside reporter, and mixing all of that together. So... There's a lot of a lot of things that you could learn from her. And uh I actually Kai, last thing. Any tips na mga gusto mag courtside reporting? La the before they come to the auditions. What any last tips before we cap this off? Mm, tips for aspiring courtside reporters. Yeah. I would say first, um, know your why. Um, you have to be genuine with why you mm. want to be there, and you know it can't be for all these wrong reasons. Um, second, um, always be open to learning and recognize that there's always gonna be someone better than you. Like you have to be humble all the time. And third, I think, just put in the work. Like put in the work, show up. Um, be prepared, and yeah. Um, when you do that, good things will happen for you. Everybody, that's Kai King Su, uh, DLS, DL, the DLSU courtside reporter, and we can't wait to see what happens next in her career. Everybody, this is the Six Man Podcast. This is Nico. Don't forget to give us a five star rating on Spotify, and for those watching on uh, watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. I I always appreciate that. And Kai, thanks again for being a guest here. And uh, for squeezing this one hour in your very busy uh, busy schedule. Thank you, Nico, for having me. I had fun. <laughs> Same. And uh, hopefully we can get to bring more uh, girl guests in the podcast. She's the first of many. Because I want to I wanna have like sina Jack, Annie, Mom, naman. Uh, Katrina Goiting, kung mga nasa Sea Games line. So hopefully, right? Like, let's cross our fingers and other women in the field of media and sports. Thank you so much, everybody. Good evening and peace.